Hi everyone, welcome to Flex Talk. I am Tara Dunn with Omni PCB. And I'm Elizabeth Foradori with Omni PWB. During our sessions, Elizabeth and I focus on things related to Flex or Rigid Flex manufacturing. Today we'll be chatting about our thoughts on comparing the cost of Rigid Flex technology with the more traditional approach of using cable to connect one or more rigid PCBs. The transition to a rigid flex design has obvious benefits, space, weight, packaging, reliability, and increased current carrying capabilities, yet many times the perception that rigid flex is a high cost solution causes designers and engineers to hesitate. Oftentimes the bareboard cost of the rigid PCBs are being compared to the bareboard cost of the rigid flex, and the rigid flex alternative is dismissed as too expensive. We recommend comparing the total cost of assembly rather than the bareboard cost. This provides a much more comprehensive analysis of the true cost of the project. Our discussion today is not intended to be an all-inclusive list of items to be considered. Every application is going to be unique, but our hope is that this discussion helps facilitate the thought process and further discussion when considering the transition to rigid flex technology. So let's start with the cost of design. With the rigid flex, you are merging multiple boards into one design. With the rigid PCB cable solution, multiple PCB designs and multiple cable assembly designs are required. So the cost for generating each of these designs should be calculated and included when doing a comparison of both solutions. The cost of cable and connector should also be included. The rigid flex cost should be compared with all of the components of the PCB cable solution, including the rigid PCBs, connectors, wire, wire markers, shrink tubing, cable ties, and the freight associated with each of those components. The other things to consider are the cost of the assembly operation. Obviously, with RigidFlex, it requires only one assembly rather than multiple assemblies. There's included in the assembly cost, there's a cost for kitting the assembly, the labor for each assembly, in-process inspection for each assembly, cable test assembly, final testing, and then the PCB tooling and test, and then miscellaneous costs like engineering time, et cetera. <clears throat> also, the cost of testing the boards with the rigid flex, since it's all in one piece, there's only one test operation, and you have the ability to test the full assembly prior to installation. Next thing to consider is reliability. The flex connector is now an integral part of the board. There are no solder connections between boards. Now this is particularly uh, important in harsh environments and possibly environments where there may be vibrations and this is a much more reliable connection. In this case the reliability of the unit is going to come from a good design rather than from a good assembly. And then let's look at the cost of order processing. So while a rigid flex is ordered as one unit, each of the multiple components associated with the PCB and cable solution have order processing costs that should be considered. For example, with purchase order generation, each of the individual PCBs and cable harnesses would require a purchase order. This requires a minimum of two, but most often three or more POs when compared to one for the rigid flex design. And the same is true for receiving costs to bring each of those in, incoming inspection time and processing, material handling and storage. And there are also costs associated with invoice processing and the payment for each of those components that can be factored into the total cost comparison. So I think logically it's easy to agree that working with a single rigid flex design rather than the multiple components of the PCB and cable option does simplify things. The big question becomes, does it save enough cost to justify the transition to rigid flex technology? On this slide, we've given an example of a simple comparison. If the comparison is being done at the bare board level, we would be looking at a cost of $20 for the PCBs compared to $135 for the rigid flex, and the rigid flex does appear cost prohibitive. But if we compare the total cost of assembly, including the items that we have been discussing here this morning, the, the comparison becomes $391 to the $135 for rigid flex. As we mentioned earlier, this list is not intended to be all inclusive, but just to provide a basis for further discussion when you're looking at comparing the cost of rigid flex technology with normal PCB and cable solutions. 
RigidFlex technology is a growing aspect of the PCB market. As electronics become increasingly smaller, the space, weight, and packaging benefits of RigidFlex technology are more in demand. Rather than simply comparing the cost of the individual rigid PCBs with the cost of the RigidFlex, analyzing the total cost of assembly for both solutions may enable designers and engineers to justify the transition to RigidFlex technology to take advantage of all these benefits. We hope everyone has enjoyed this session and we were able to provide information that will be helpful to you. Remember, designing and purchasing circuit boards should not be difficult. We hope you can join us next time for our next session. Thank you.